Welcome to Generation Impact Bible College this evening. It's so awesome to be with you guys. What a great privilege and honor to be able to come together again in an opportune time like this. It is a great time to be able to worship God and to uplift His name and to make His name big. So I have an expectation tonight that as we study God's Word, as we get into God's Word, God's Word will illuminate itself and it will become a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So tonight we're looking at uh, topic number 382 and uh, we are focusing on uh, the title which is Spiritual Hunger. So that is what we are talking tonight. So as people are busy signing on and coming online, let's just commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to come together once again, Lord. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it for granted, Lord. And we thank you, Father, as we meet together. Lord, that you fa said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And pray tonight that every single heart is open, Father God. Every ear is anointed to be able to receive the word of God and to make the word of God big in their lives. Father God, we know and understand that as we need to go forward in the things of the Lord, Father God, that we also need that revelation knowledge. We need that illumination. We need that word that comes and, Father God, just inspires us and makes us more like you, Lord. So we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for everything that will be accomplished tonight as we go through this word and as we study this word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So as people are busy coming on, my name is Pastor Leslie Hissel, and uh, we are here tonight to <coughs> excuse me, start, study topic number 382. And the title for this particular topic tonight is uh, Spiritual Hunger. I believe that to be able to receive anything from the Lord, we need to make sure that we are spiritually hungry. If I can put it like this, um, we cannot afford to lose our first love. We need to pursue the things of the Lord. And when we do that, it's through that that you and I are able to receive the very word engrafted into our spirit. And as we do that, we are able to go forward in the things of the Lord. If you want to see revival in your life, if you want to see God move and work in your life, if you want to be able to see the Word of God uh, deliver in your life, you have to start developing a spiritual hunger for the things of the Lord. And you've got to pursue Him with every fiber of your being. You cannot just sit idly by and expect Him to come and to, to move in your life. The Bible says that we need to... Go after the Lord. We need to move after Him and pursue Him with everything we have. So that's what we're talking about tonight when we talk about spiritual hunger. So let's start out with Psalm 42 verses 1 through 2. And it says this, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Question mark. So we are... To pursue God. We are like the deer that comes before the brooks. And he's, he's panting. He, he, he cannot help himself. But he, he's so thirsty. He goes down and he just uh, uh, fills himself. And, and quenches his thirst. And pushes in. And the same way as that deer goes after the water. To, to receive nourishment. To receive input. To receive that which the Spirit of the Lord. Or what, what he needs to nourish his body. The same way you and I have to pursue and press into the things of the Lord. We also see in Revelations chapter 21 and verse 6, we see this. And he further said to them, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I myself will give water without price from the fountain or the springs of the water of life. God himself promises that he will quench our thirst. He will, he will come and he will feed our, our, our thirst. And make sure that that thirst is quenched as you pursue the things of the Lord. So if you tonight can start developing that hunger and that thirst in you, you will start seeing the things of the Lord manifest and work through your lives. Do not assume that that hunger and thirst will always be there. I know that very often when people first get born again, when they accept Christ into their life for the first time, that they are so excited with their first love, they pursue, they read the Bible, they pursue God, they, they pray, they, they want to hear His voice, everything like that. But then as times go on and, and the circumstances and the, and the trials and the tribulations of life come and they occur in your life and they start uh, clouding your judgment and influencing your your life, then that hunger starts dissipating, it starts disappearing. And you find yourself not really pursuing the things of the Lord the way that you did when you first uh, got born again. You don't press in and seek God and everything that is of God um, 
during that time. So you, you grow dim in your, in your walk with the Lord. So we have to pursue that thing. And so it's, there's a hunger that you need to pursue. There's a hunger that you need to feed and develop. And as you do that, you will find yourself growing in the things of the Lord. So let's have a look then quickly at the spiritual appetite, our spiritual appetite. There's an interesting verse in Psalm 30, 63, sorry, and verse 1. And I'm going to read it from the Amplified Classic Version. And it says this, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. That is a decision that the psalmist makes that he will, he chooses to seek God. He chooses to pursue God. He does not just assume that the, the appetite is going to be there. He makes a decision that he is going to pursue God. And he says this, my inner self thirsts for you. That talks about the soul you share. That talks about the inside of you. My, my, not my physical body because your physical body it's quenched by natural water that you get from a river or from a dam or whatever. But your spirit man needs the water of the Lord, the water of God. And that comes from God himself. And that feeds you and I. And your inner, inner self thirsts for, for, for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you. I want you to get the picture of somebody that's crawling in the desert. Where you are in a dry parched land. A place where there is no water. And when you're, you are so desperate for that water to come to quench your, your, your thirst, that you will do anything to get that water. It is the same desperation and same, uh, need that we need to cultivate in our hearts that I cannot live unless God feeds me the water of life from the fountains of life as we saw in Revelations 21. So we need to pursue God and make sure that we feed off and we desire and we receive the water from that in a dry and weary land where there no, no, where, where no water is. So there you've got the image then of a desert. You've got somebody crawling in a desert needing that <clears throat> water because their lips are parched, their, their mouth is dry, the tongue is sticking to, the, to their palate. And they need the very water of the Lord to come to quench them and to fill them and to, and to make them in, or to satisfy them. Now you need to understand in John chapter 4 and verse 34, let me read it for you. It says, Jesus said to them, my food, nourishment in other words, is to do the will or the pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and complete and the finish the work or his work, sorry. So we need to come, so you need two things. You need to do his will and you, of the person who sent you and you've got to accomplish and finish his work. So those are the things that you and I need to do. So unless we get to a place where we pursue that and we desire that and we and embrace that, we are going to have a, a challenge or we're going to have a problem. So we need to develop that appetite. That appetite needs to grow. Now, I, when you open, when I speak to people, I encourage them to get into the Word of God and to study the Word of God and to receive from the Word of God. Because when you do that, here's the strange thing that happens in your life. You'll find the more that you embrace the Word of God, the more you meditate on the Word of God, the more you get into the Word of God, the more that you want the Word of God. And the more you want to feast off the Word of God. So if you do that and you are faithful and you pursue that Word and you feed on that Word and you allow that Word to, to come into your life and to change you from the inside out, when you start allowing that to happen, the net, your hunger for the word multiplies and increases. And so we see that you need to finish or we need to um, do the will of the Father, all right, to be able to be nourished. And then also the completion of that work helps us to get there. Then we need to cultivate our appetite, sorry. So there's the development of it. That means it gets structured and shaped. Cultivate means to nurture it. Cultivate means that you're going to spend time in the Word. And you're going to cultivate it like you'll cultivate a garden. Weed it. Clean it up. Water the plants, etc., etc. Your faith you, or your, 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 your um, hunger, your appetite, you're going to do the same thing. You've got to nourish it. You've got to look after it. You've got to feed it. And you've got to grow your appetite for the things of the Lord. You've got to grow your appetite for the Word of the Lord. You've got to grow your appetite for your relationship with the Lord. So that is something that you need to cultivate and develop 
in your life and you've got to look after it because if you don't look after it and you don't cultivate it, you're going to find that it's not going to grow. It's not going to develop. Your appetite will become no, no stronger. You'll say, oh, I don't have an appetite. I don't have an appetite for the Word of God. You need to develop that appetite and cultivate it. And then you've got to protect it because in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, like newborn babies, you should crave... Thirst for, earnestly desire, the pure, unadulterated, spiritual milk. Alright? That by it you may be nurtured and grow unto complete salvation. So there you see the nurturing, the cultivating. You see the whole growing and developing to, a com to be complete in your salvation. We're all on a journey. We're all growing. We're all developing over time. Some of us might just be a little bit further down the road than others. But we all grow. I don't think we ever come to a place here on earth where we will be able to make a statement and say, I know everything about God that they used to know. I don't think we'll ever be able to do that. We'll always know in part because why God is greater than our thoughts. God is greater than our ways. God is greater than anything that you and I could imagine here on earth. And God is way beyond our natural comprehension, if I can put it that way. So we need to grow and develop in the things of the Lord. And as we do that, we cultivate our relationship with Him. We cultivate our appetite and, and hunger. And that is how we nurture and grow into the completeness of the salvation that God, through Jesus Christ, purchased for us on the cross. Then we determine how hungry you are for the things of God. You determine it, okay? You are what you eat, in other words. And I like that, I like that statement because I've experienced it in my own life. I experienced that when I, when I grow dumb in my, in my pursuit of the Word of God, when I maybe don't read as much as I should be reading, maybe not praying as much as I should be praying, uh, pursuing the presence of God, spending time with Him. If I do not do those things, I find that I can, I can very easily start sliding backwards. And I, I'll, I'll go into a lull. I'll go into a compromise. I, Blaise, have to personally, con all the time, pursue and push in and press in to the very presence, the very anointing, the very power of God. And I've got a hunger and thirst of Him. I've got to cultivate that in my life. You know, don't, if I don't do that, if I don't nurture it and grow it, I find that it subsides. I find that it backs off. So our spiritual hunger is critical. It's just like normal food. It's just like eating normally. You, you eat... And you develop a hunger and an appetite for those things. If you don't eat and you get sick and your body is not in a good shape, um, your appetite dissipates and disappears. All right. And if you eat good food here on earth, then you will have an appetite for more good food. All right. So you eat the good stuff, you want more good stuff. And that is really how the appetite grows and how it develops. In the spirit realm, it's the same thing. You cannot feed yourself, all right, on unhealthy food. You can't feed yourself on anything that like that and then expect to become strong or be strong in the things of the Lord. If you feed yourself mediocre, junk food, things that are not really strong, uh, word, milk, bread, solid meat, if you don't do that, you're going to find yourself in a place where you're not going to be strong, you're not going to develop an attitude, uh, um, appetite, and you're going to basically be in a place that uh, makes you a weak believer, weak in faith, weak in all those things. Then we need to avoid that junk food in the spirit, all right? So in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6 through 7, it says, For this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Look at those that word lusts. Always learning, okay, in verse 7, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. So in other words, they're consuming knowledge, but that knowledge they never actually apply and never have in their life and they never makes a difference in their life. It's like James speaks and he says, you look in the word of God, it's like a mirror and you behold yourself. But when you turn around, you walk away, you forget what you saw in the mirror and it doesn't, it has zero impact on you. If the word of God is like that in your life, then you are not feeding your spiritual hunger. You're not developing that spiritual hunger to receive more. Because I embrace the Word of God, and I look at the mirror of the Word of God, and I see those issues or problems that the Holy Spirit is revealing to me. And I embrace that, and I start 
trusting God for the change in my life, allowing the Holy Spirit entrance to come and do a complete and a total work, working with me as a comforter, as a helper, as a guide. As we do that, we start embracing, we start working through that. That is when we start developing that hunger, because now the Holy Spirit is actively participating in our lives and working in our lives as we work through these particular challenges and issues. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16, the Bible says this, For all that is in this world, the lust of the flesh, which is basically craving for sensual gratification, and the lust of the eyes, and that is greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, which is the assurances in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world itself. When you and I seek spiritual hunger, we cannot look at the world and derive and draw from the world that which should be coming from the Spirit. All right? So we have to have the spiritual hunger. Remember, you are spirit long before you were flesh. Okay, the flesh is born out of the spirit, not vice versa. You're not finding that the spirit comes from the flesh. Therefore, the flesh is subject to the spirit, and the spirit is not subject to the flesh. So as your flesh is su subject to the spirit, so you pursue and push after the things of the spirit, because as you push after the things of the spirit, you will fulfill your spiritual hunger. All right, And as you do that, you will start embracing the things of the Spirit and you allow the things of the Spirit to gain entrance into your life. And that is how the hunger for the things of the Lord grows and develops and becomes strong in your life. And then, therefore, the appetite for the things of the world will dissipate and disappear. But the appetite for the things of the Lord and what God wants in our lives will grow, increase, and multiply. And that is what you and I as a believer want because through that, when we do that and we embrace the, the very essence of God, if I can put it that way, you will start experiencing the revival of God, the revival fires of God ignited in your life and start working through your life and your life will then become relevant in this world and you will start seeing the changes in your life and you'll see your circumstance and, and, and environment improve and grow. But not only that, your life will now become relevant in the community that you touch and you will start seeing the change that your life brings into the community and into the places and people with which you connect on a daily basis. You see, that is why it is critical, it is vital, it is important that we embrace the very essence of God through spiritual hunger by studying and getting into the Word of God and pursuing presence with Him. Then we, so we see that there has to be a spiritual appetite. Okay, but that appetite also needs to be developed and grown, as we said earlier on. So in one in Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 2, the Bible says this. It says, wait and listen. Anyone who is thirsty. All right, that refers to the person who is hungry and thirsty after things of the Lord. Come to the waters. And he has no money. Come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. That sounds like by faith. <coughs> Excuse me, when you and I, through self-surrender, accept that which God has for us and allow it to bless us and to come in and to bring the change, as you can see, there's a hunger and a thirst for these things, which are priceless. You cannot buy them. You cannot pay for them. They are free. You and I just have to press in and receive and accept that which God has for us. It, your money doesn't qualify, doesn't, cannot buy this. There's nothing that you and I can do to earn it and to be able to even try and buy it. It is free from God as we come and we eat that which the Spirit has. In verse 2 it then says, Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness, the profusion of spiritual joy. 
I like the way that the fatness of the spirit is likened unto the spiritual joy that you and, can, you and I can ex expect and participate in when we hunger and thirst after the things of the Lord. And when we come and we understand that, listen, if I take my money and I spend it on, on, on worldly things, things that are going to be um, just there to uh, suffice or supply or feed my natural body and the things of my flesh, um, then it says that is worthless. It, it, it's got no value. You need to pursue the things of God and you've got to buy that which is spiritual, that which is going to grow you and develop you and make you stronger in life and in the Lord. Okay. Then it's, then, so strip away then anything that can make you lose your hunger. All right. Strip it away. Get rid of it. Don't, uh, don't entertain it in any way whatsoever. Strip it away. Things like complacency. Okay. Complacency means willing to fit in with others. All right. So, so you come and you're complacent. You've got nothing that's really driving you or pushing you and you're just happy to, to compromise and to, and to fit in. All right. We cannot pursue that. We cannot push that. We cannot go to that place. We have to pursue the things of the Lord and not settle for complacency. Habit. All right. Those are things that rob you and I of spiritual hunger. When you get into uh, the, the same old routine, with no real meaning in it. So it's just same old, same old. Doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Not pursuing the freshness and the, and the, and the, and the joy and the power and the anointing of God. And getting into a place where you're embracing God and encountering Him fresh, fresh manner. Every single day. Spiritual hunger to press in and say, Lord, I want to, I want to learn more about you. I want to know more about you. I want to experience more about you. I want to feel your presence more. I want to push into who you are. You cannot get into the habit of complacency or you just into a, a habit of just settling for same old, same old. Then be careful of mediocrity. All right. Mediocrity means settling, compromising for second best. All right. Not pursuing the real thing. Okay. Going after God and saying, Lord, I want to encounter absolutely everything that you have for me. I am going to continue pushing in. And I know even when I push in, whatever I experience today is only but the beginning. Tomorrow you're going to have fresh encounters, fresh manna for me. I thank you, Father. It's impossible on this natural earth for me to even fathom the depths of all your, of who you are. Because you are eternal. You are the great I am. You are a Shaddai. You are the one that's more than enough. And because I press into you, there is, I cannot settle for your mediocrity. I have to learn everything like, that you are. Like Moses, I've got to say, Lord, I want to see your glory. And I've got to press in. I've got to say, Lord, I will not settle for anything less but your best. And therefore we go in and we don't accept mediocrity. We don't settle for mediocrity. That is why spiritual hunger and thirsting is that drives you and I, should drive you and I, and motivate us and get us into getting to know God for who He is. Praising Him and saying, Lord, I want to know and experience everything about you that is possible. Then we have to avoid wrong choices. Wrong choices refer mainly to wrong living. All right, because the thing is, when I make wrong choices and wrong living, I am getting into a place where I'm not necessarily agreeing or, or doing the word of God in my life. So I might make compromised decisions. I might make decisions that are not going to push me through right into the very presence of God, right into the very midst of God, of who God is. So I've got to be careful because that is going to, that is going to, uh, um, bring me into a place where I'm not going to have the spiritual hunger. I'm not going to have a hungry heart after the things of the Lord. And therefore, I'm going to compromise. And I'm going to make wrong choices and wrong decisions. Then I've got to also look out for bad influences. Basically, associations. Wrong associations. You cannot think that you can associate with the world or things of the world and and not be burnt by it. Okay? You are... you. The, the danger involved in that is that you can find yourself in a place of compromise. You don't want to do that. You want the best of God that God has for you. And to receive the best of God for you, you need to press into the very midst of God. You have to develop a hunger and a thirst for the spiritual things of the Lord. So that as you do that, you become sensitive to the things of the Holy Spirit. Your ear becomes tuned to every single word He speaks. 
and you become a, a doer of the world, willing and obedient to do everything that the Father instructs you to do, pressing into His very midst, into His very presence. These are things that causes us to not press into the very heart of God. All right, we need to strip those things away. We've got to take them away so you don't find yourself in this place of complacency, um, compromise. Mediocracy, wrong decisions, bad influences, etc. So, what do you do then? Look at your daily routines. Okay, look and see what you do. All right. If you have a daily routine where you are pressing into the very presence and midst of God, and you are pressing into touch Him and to touch who He is, and you want to learn more about Him, and you want His will done in your life, and you want to be a, a vessel through Him which He operates and works then check out your daily routine. Make sure you get into the Word of God. Make sure that you pray. Make sure you set time aside to be with Him. Then how do you spend your time? That's another way to look and see how, how, how are you doing? How are you developing your spiritual hunger? Where is your time going? Are you watching too much television? Are you getting too involved in, in uh, stuff that has got nothing to do with the Word of God? Or are you rather, when you have the opportunity, do you embrace the Word of God, spend time reading the Word of God? Just praying, spend time with God, allowing His Spirit to come and have entrance into your life. Obviously, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 7 says we need to pray without ceasing. So that is a no-brainer. You need to pray. I need to pray. The Bible also tells us to spend time in the Word of God. We've seen Psalm 1 verse 2. But His delight is in the law of the Lord and His law He meditates day and night. And then we need to pursue presence. We need to seek to be in God's presence, to be with Him, and to allow Him to minister to us and us to minister to Him. And that we see in Psalm 105 and verse 4. Seek, inquire of, and for the Lord, and, and crave Him, and His strength, His might, His inflexibility to temptation. Seek and require His face and His presence continually evermore. So here the psalmist make, he shows us the, the passion and the desire to press into to him, to seek him, to require him. You want him, you need him, you can't be without him. And to then continually forevermore pursue his presence. Allow yourself to dwell in his presence and to seek his presence. So you can test your hunger for the things of the Lord. And that is something that we as believers need to do. In Psalm 36 and verse 7 through 9 he says, How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of men take refuge and put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They relish and feast on the abundance of your house. And you cause them to drink of the stream of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. So the psalmist tells us to go and to check out our relationship with God. Check out your spiritual hunger. Check out how hungry you are for the things of the Lord. Are you pursuing Him? Are you uh, hiding under Him? Are you taking refuge and trusting in Him? Are you relishing and feasting on the abundance in His house? What are you doing? All right. And you can basically test your hunger by seeing what you are doing. Are you doing what Psalm 36, 7 through 9 tells us to do? Are you experiencing that? Can you measure your temperature and see where you are in the, in your hunger for God? Ask yourself, am I hungry and passionate for God? You need to give yourself an honest assessment and give yourself an honest, an honest valuation. If yes, then protect your heart and mind to, uh, sorry, and, and mind, protect your heart and mind to remain so. We see in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. So we need to look after our heart, our thunder and thirst, a hungry heart after the things of the Lord. The spiritual hunger, we need to guard our heart because if we are doing the things to pursue God and to have a relationship with Him, we need to guard that and protect that and, ma and make sure it remains like that. If no, then ask yourself, what must change? What do you have to change to really pursue the things of the Lord? If you've lost your first love and you're not pursuing the things of the Lord like you used to, and you're not spending the time with God like you used to, then do that bit of introspection. Go to God. Pray. Ask Him. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to push in and to do the things that I need to do to be able to come closer to you. Pursue and desire righteousness. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous 
in that state in which we, the born again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Uprightness and right standing with God for they shall be completely satisfied. Okay, so you and I pursue after righteousness. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So we need to pursue that. Now some of you might say to me, but we receive the, the gift of righteousness when we become born again. Yes, you do. And that brings you into a, a, a legal right standing with God. And that brings us into His very presence. And He gifts us with that. But when we pursue righteousness, we are pursuing becoming more like Jesus. We are pursuing being like Him in our conduct, in our in our heart's desires. We, we pursue to reflect Him and to show Him. We desire to have His righteousness reflect through us. So when we pursue righteousness, we are renewing our minds and allowing our minds to embrace the Word of God so that we can live the life that God has purposed and planned for our lives. So pursuing righteousness is not pursuing the gift of righteousness because that's already yours. But pursuing righteousness is coming to a place of reflecting Christ, showing God, understanding our relationship with Him, understanding how we walk with Him, showing His character in our life, pursuing the fruits of the Spirit, etc., etc., etc. Then we have an instruction in Psalm 34 and verse 8. And it says this, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. So the minute that your faith, your believing is in God, you will embrace Him and you will taste Him to see that He is good. I challenge people, I say very often I see too many believers walk this life with Christ with a long face, no smile, no joy, no nothing. Why? Because they've never tasted to see the Lord is good. You see, you and I have to press in and to see God show Himself faithful to you. You and I have to press in and allow God to demonstrate and show His love for us. You know, the Bible talks about it in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19 onwards, the end of the chapter. It talks about the experiential knowledge, if you look at the Amplified Bible, of the depth of the love of God. To fathom that depth. Now, fathom means you're gonna, you're gonna find out where it goes to and where it is. And we need to press in and we need to fathom that for ourselves. There's a need for us to, sh to allow God to show Himself real, to show Himself of who He is, to demonstrate and expose His love to us. The goodness of the Lord leads us to repentance. And therefore we need to experience it. So we need to, in John 4 verse 10, it says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. So we, we live in humility. We do not exalt ourselves or make ourselves bigger than what we should be. We humble ourselves, rather come to a place of serving. And Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. So we have to be humble in our conduct. Towards God and towards men. And at the same time we have to have a repentant heart. If you know that you've done something that is not pleasing unto God. Be quick to repent. Allow the Holy Spirit entrance in to come and heal, restore and make whole. Then we have to receive, be quick to be taught. Receive correction from the word of the Lord. So the minute that you see that something is not, uh, you may be not believing right. You may be, may be doing stuff that is not maybe 100% lined up with the God, word of God. We need to adjust. We need to change because the mind is being renewed on a continuous basis. And the more the word we allow entrance, the more that the word brings that in. And the Holy Spirit starts adjusting us and changing us and we can live a life. And through that, we find that God makes the path straight for you and I. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6, it says this, In all your ways, know, recognize and acknowledge Him. This is embracing God and pulling Him and drawing Him into your life. And as you do that, as a hungry and thirst for Him, I want Him to be part of my life. I want Him to come in and, and engage me in all aspects. And, and He will direct and make straight and plain your path. So the minute that we embrace Him, we recognize Him, we know Him, and we acknowledge Him in our lives, and we, we do what He tells us to do and he te what He teaches us to do, the minute we do that, he will direct and make straight and plain your and my paths. Okay, so we acknowledge Him and embrace Him. In Isaiah 45 and verse 2, I will go before you and make the crooked paths and uh, places straight. I will break in uh, pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. So that every hindrance, everything that holds, that holds you back, restrains you. 
When you taste and see that the Lord is good, this is what you can expect to manifest in your life. This is the kind of thing that will start working out in your life. You will embrace God and you will see how His hand starts moving in your life and how He progresses and propels you forward because He's his desire is to see you blessed. His desire is to see you prosperous. His desire is to see you walk in good health. He, <clears throat> his desire is all those things. He only wants good for you. He's got no bad desire for you whatsoever. Everything that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. He seeks for you that which is good. Then we see in um, Psalm 119 verse 105 that says this, Your word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. The more we embrace God's word and we allow the word to start working in us, His word illuminates our path to go ahead. Why? Because we know the very word of God. We know the very passion, the heart of God. And as we know that, we can go forward. We taste and see that the Lord is good. We want to embrace Him and draw Him and pull Him into our lives. We want to seek Him, our spiritual hunger. We want to turn out the, the appetite and allow the appetite to develop for more of God, more of God. I will not be satisfied with what I have right now. I want more and I want God to embrace and work in my life more. And that is what we need to do. We embrace Him. We pull close to Him. Then in John chapter 7 and verse 37 through 38, it says, Now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. So if you look at that last verse, the Bible encourages us to come to God and to drink. He who is thirsty, okay, come and drink. If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. So when you have got a void in your life, when you have got a hunger in your life, when you have a desire in your life, when the, you want God to fill that, you draw it into your life by being hungry and thirsty for the things of the Lord. And the Lord says, come to Him and drink. And when you and I come to Him to drink, He says that from our bellies will flow forth rivers of living water. So now what does that mean? That means that people can come and they can be refreshed by your presence, by you being in their midst. You become a channel for the Holy Spirit. And as you drink because you are thirsty and you fill yourself Others will come and they will drink from you. What a picture. Because the thing is that our lives then become a channel through which God flows and shows himself real to this world. And they can come to our lives and be nourished. They can be fulfilled because they will receive Christ through us. And they will see every single work of God perfected in our lives. I hope you learned something tonight. And I want to encourage you to have a hungry and a thirsty heart. A heart hungry after the things of the Lord. A heart thirsty after the things of the Lord. Because when you do that, you can expect God to come and to move in your life. As I said right in the beginning, if you want to see God move in your life, okay, and you want to receive everything that is from God, you've got to develop a hunger after Him. Now, as I said, the strange thing is, the more you eat of Him, the more hungry you become. What a thing. And I've experienced that in my own life. And I know when I start getting a bit dry, I know, get back into the Word. Increase the volume. Magnify the quantity. And get into the Word and allow the Word to work in you. So until next time, may the Lord richly bless you. God, He should be on after this.